Welcome to worship at Rockport United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Lauren Radzik, and we are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. We invite you to join us with your whole hearts in worship and to respond with the things in bold print and to join us in song at home. Friends, we invite you to participate in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad in it. Make way for the coming of the Lord. Prepare your hearts and your homes. The coming, the coming of, of Jesus, Jesus is foretold. Is we rejoice and join in song. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to God who comes to dwell among us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Refining God, you have sent us prophets and we have not listened. We have not always determined what is best or made way for your reign in our lives, our church and our society. Forgive us, we pray, and renew your covenant within us. Fill us with peace and a longing for justice that will not fail. Empower us to go into the world unafraid for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners and proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, send your Holy Spirit to speak peace that the good news of this age may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. <clears throat> On this second Sunday of Advent, we remember the story of Jesus' mother, Mary. Pledged to Mary Joseph, her life changed in an instant when the angel Gabriel visited her with a request. Greetings, favored one. Do not be afraid for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Surely in those moments, Mary was afraid. The news that she was to bear a son in the, to the world came as a great surprise that would change her life forever. Mary had a lot at stake in her decision to say yes to God, but she did not let her fear overwhelm her. Instead, she replies, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be me according to your word. Today, as we light the candle of peace, we pause to remember and reflect on the many places in our life where we can be peacemakers and where we long for peace. In these moments, we offer our prayers and praise to God. And we pray together. Holy God, you have come to live among us, promising to be the Prince of Peace, but we have disregarded your presence. We often find ourselves praying for peace, but full of fear and anxiety instead. Hold us close and draw us into your loving kingdom. Remind us of the angel's words, do not be afraid as we step into our future. Just as Mary responded out of this faithfulness and rather than fear, help us to respond in faith to all that you call us to do as we prepare for Christ's promised return. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. The New Testament lesson today comes from Malachi chapter three, verses one through four. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. 
the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Hello, everybody. Can you think of anything that is impossible? First of all, do you guys know what impossible means? Some of you might. The dictionary says that impossible is something that is not able to happen, to exist, or be done. There are so many things that we just can't do. For example, very few people can lick their elbows. You can't fly on your own, right? Don't try that. Uh, we can't teach a goldfish to play the trumpet. We can't be in two places at once. We are not Harry Potter with a time changer. Uh, we cannot get Daisy to stop barking all of the time. And the list goes on and on. So admit it, right now while I am talking, you have been trying to lick your elbow, right? You know, there are also so many things that we can do. Try some of these right now. We can breathe, right? We can breathe. We can raise our hands. We can look up at the ceiling, right? We can clap our hands. We can wave to someone. And I bet you guys can think of even more things that we can do. And that's just a few of the many, 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 many things that we can do. God carefully chose those things for us, making sure he remembered all the important ones, like eating, breathing, and talking. Most of you guys know the story of baby Jesus' birth and some of that history. We tell it at least once a year, right? Sometimes we even tell it more than that. Take a couple seconds right now to think in your head. Where does the beginning of our story start? Some of you might be thinking right now, Mrs. Holchin, uh, baby Jesus, right? And of course, you would not be completely wrong. If you're kind of thinking overall, where does Jesus' story start? You could actually tell people with the 
baby part of him, right? And you wouldn't be wrong. But not only does Jesus' story start before that, it has many different befores. In the Old Testament, there are several times that they talk about the Savior coming and people predict it. And there's a lot of scripture. In the New Testament, where do we begin? We begin with Mary. Who is Mary? And right now, I bet you're thinking she's Jesus' mother. I'm asking a lot of questions you know today. For Mary, we would say that once there was a girl named Mary, she was a very good girl. She did her chores, she listened to her parents, and she always did the right thing. And she loved God with all of her heart and tried her best to follow the rules to live by that God wanted for all people. Mary was also engaged to be married, and his name was Joseph, and he was a carpenter. One day, while Mary was at home cleaning her room, an angel suddenly appeared. Before Mary could say anything, the angel told Mary that she was favored by God and that God was with her. Mary was surprised, and she was trying not to be afraid. But she had never seen an angel before. After all, she was just a regular person like me and you. Why was the angel visiting her? What did this angel want? Well, the angel quickly tried to reassure her. Do not be afraid, the angel said. God has found favor with you, and you will have a baby boy, and you are to give him the name Jesus. The angel also told her the Holy Spirit will perform a miracle, and because of this, your baby will be called the Son of God. To Mary's surprise, the angel had more exciting news. Even your cousin Elizabeth is going to have a son in her older age. Many people thought that she couldn't have children, but remember, nothing is impossible with God. We talk about that a lot. Nothing is impossible with God. Mary couldn't believe what she was hearing, and she didn't know what to say. She realized that she was shaking, and so she knelt down. When she was finally able to speak, she said, I am the Lord's servant, and I have faith that everything you said will come true. God chose Mary to do a wonderful thing, to be Jesus' mother. Mary was a good person. Remember what the story said? She made a wonderful mother for Jesus. How would you guys feel if an angel came to you to talk? Would you listen right away? Would you be scared? All right, your challenge for the week. Please think of one person related to you or a friend that you can give a gift to anonymously that you didn't buy or that you've made, like a craft, or for people you'll be able to be in contact with in your homes if you have been kind of quarantined with them, you can do a baked good. Or if you have something that you don't need anymore, but it's really in good condition and you think of somebody that you know it would be perfect for, you can use that too, with permission from your parents. Wrap it up, leave it with their name on it. When you put who is from, be creative. Say someone who loves you or, I am grateful that you are you, or something else that you can think of. A kind gesture that you are doing out of love and kindness will make somebody feel over the moon. And that is what we want, especially this year, to do something kind for someone that you don't have to spend a lot of money on. You can make it, it can be from your heart. And somebody out there will know that you're thinking of them. And don't forget your reverse advent calendar, too, to collect your canned goods. That's really important as well. We always need to remember that nothing is impossible with God. Let's have our prayer. Gracious Lord, we are grateful that you chose Mary to deliver and love Jesus. We are grateful that you sent such a precious and wonderful gift to your people. We are grateful that you love us so much that you want us to succeed. We are grateful for your strength, grace, forgiveness, and peace, and for always being with us. We are grateful that with you, nothing is impossible. In your name, we pray these things. 
Amen. Today's gospel lesson is from Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. together. Loving God, you have brought us to worship today to remind us of your love sent to us through your son, Jesus. Today we've offered ourselves in worship, longing for your presence to be made real in our midst. We cry out to you, longing and hoping and wishing to be together, to light our Advent candles and sing our hymns and be with one another in community face to face. We long to celebrate this Advent and Christmas season in all the ways that we usually do, but we trust that you have promised to be wherever we are. And we trust in your promises, believing with our whole hearts. Remind us that you are present with us as we reimagine this season. Come, Holy Spirit, and open our eyes to your presence around us in fresh and new ways. 
Teach us to be compassionate, to always work for justice. Remind us of your promises as we move ourselves from fear to faithfulness. And lead us from our worship to boldly share your love with each person we encounter, with every conversation that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So today I want to take a moment and invite you to think about the big events in your life. The ones that you had responsibilities in planning for. Maybe not things that you've done this year because the pandemic has changed so much about our plans. But think about big events of the past. It might have been a milestone birthday party, your wedding, a party for someone else, a giant event at church, something that you had to work for and plan for. Now that you have that firmly in your mind, think about the amount of work it takes to pull off those big kind of events. There are invitations to be sent out, details to coordinate, and things that inevitably, in spite of all the best planning, get overlooked. I remember feeling that way when Dave and I were planning our wedding several years ago. Being the type A person that I am, I had a whole wedding planning binder that I carried around to every appointment and every place we went. Inside, it was all color-coded and there were tabs for everything, from the dress to the venue and the food, the wedding party, the photographer, what everyone was wearing, the flowers, and even little swatches of the coordinating colors for our day. It was a lot of work and a lot of planning just to get the details exactly as we wanted them to be. And in the end, there were some things that never got checked off our to-do list and some things that didn't go quite right. And it was all okay. Though Mary and Joseph wouldn't have been planning the same kind of wedding that I planned, I imagine that as a young woman engaged to her beloved, she had her fair share of tasks and was probably making her own lists in her mind. Surely her family was doing that. There was a dowry for her family to consider, a gift to the groom's family. And there was planning for the wedding celebration, which for many folks in Mary's day was a multi-day feast to which everyone in town was invited. Think about the wedding at Cana and that story of the big party that lasts multiple days. As a bride-to-be pledged to marry Joseph, Mary certainly had a lot on her mind, not to mention all the societal standards and rules that she lived by as a Jewish person and as a woman. So then imagine what Mary must have been thinking when the angel Gabriel shows up in her midst with a greeting and a request from God. The angel said, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Scripture doesn't tell us exactly how Mary reacted. Instead, it says that she was perplexed and she pondered what sort of greeting this was. But I suspect that her reaction was one of fear. Who was this being in her midst? How had the angel gotten there? And as an engaged woman, she couldn't be seen alone with another man. And what in the world was he saying, addressing her as favored one? The next words out of Gabriel's mouth confirm that suspicion. He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and name him Jesus. And he'll be great, the son of the most high, the Lord God. That is some kind of greeting. <laughs> To be told that one has found favor with God is an amazing and wonderful blessing. To be told that God would like to use you as a vessel to bear God's Son into the world was a tremendous blessing that came with a lot of consequences. Having just received this amazing news and this remarkable, unbelievable request from God, Mary stood before the angel trying to process all the thoughts that inevitably flew through her head. Certainly, she was still very much afraid. Afraid of what her life would look like if she said yes, and probably afraid of what it would look like if she said no. After all, it was God asking. 
She was probably afraid of what Joseph would say, about what her parents might say, and certainly what her community would say and do. She might have been afraid about how this whole process would work, or of being pregnant and giving birth, and so much more. In those moments standing before the angel Gabriel, Mary had a lot to fear. But her question and response to the angel didn't reveal that fear. When I read her question, I instead see a sense of abiding curiosity. How can this be since I'm a virgin, she asks. And the angel replies, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, called the Son of God. And then the Gabriel tells her to go and visit her cousin and reminds her that nothing is impossible with God. And Mary responds to the angel after probably more than quite a few moments. She says, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel disappears just as quickly as he arrived, leaving Mary alone with her thoughts and wonderings and fears about what just happened and what she agreed to be a part of. During this encounter with the angel Gabriel, Mary had a significant choice to make. She had to decide whether she would remain stuck in her fear and anxiety about what could be or to choose faithfulness instead. Surely Mary was afraid, and there was far more for her to consider than just the brief conversation in Scripture suggests. In order to say yes to God, Mary had to give up her whole life. Everything she thought she had planned, all the dreams she had as an engaged young woman, all the things she hoped for were suddenly different. The moment she said yes, Everything about her life became suddenly less certain. No longer was she just a maiden engaged to be married, but also a mother with a child on the way. No longer was she just the sweet, innocent, good girl, the young woman everyone in town loved and respected. But she knew that soon she'd be the object of ridicule, gossip, and hatred. In an instant, her whole life changed. Mary probably feared that Joseph would end their marriage proposal and shame her publicly, unable to believe her story. She probably worried that her life was indeed at risk. In Mary's day, a possible punishment for infidelity for women in these situations was stoning. Certainly, Mary was wondering what her parents would say and what her life would be like and what would have happened if this angel had never shown up in her house at all. I'm quite sure she was wondering why God had chosen her in the first place. And isn't that so often how we feel when we're faced with the difficult situations in our own lives? Isn't that so often the question that we ask? Why me? Why us? Why now? So often when we're the recipients of unexpected news or when God calls us outside of our comfort zones, when God invites us to think differently about who we are as the people of God and what our church is called to do and to be in the world, we find ourselves afraid. But the angel's words apply not just to Mary, but to us as well. Do not be afraid, because God is in our midst. Do not be afraid and do not let your fear paralyze you. Do not be so concerned with what might happen and the worst case scenario thinking we often run through our heads, that we fail to miss what's right in front of us, that we fail to be obedient to God's call. One of the many things that we can learn from Mary in this famous Christmas story is that God is with us even when we are afraid. When there are more questions than answers, God is with us. When we don't know what will happen next, God is with us. When our hopes and dreams for the future change in an instant, God is with us. And when we don't know exactly where the next step will take us, God is with us. In reading this scripture anew this year, I see a clear message that God sends to us, 
through angels and preachers, through comfort and care for one another, even from a distance, through the community of believers and through all creation, God says to us, do not be afraid. We are a people of tremendous faith, a people who are called to respond to God, not out of our fear, but instead out of our faith. We're a people of faith who are called to go wherever God leads, moving from our very real and very valid fears into a time of faithfulness and trust that God goes with us, just like Mary and so many have done before us. During this Advent season, as we light the candle of peace today, let us remember the hopes and dreams that Mary had and the peace that she experienced, if even just for a moment, when she said yes to the adventure that God called her to be on. Let us remember Mary's selflessness and the gift of giving all of who she was in saying yes to God in placing her trust wholly and completely in the words of an angel and the power of God, no matter where God would lead her, moving her from her fears to her faithfulness. And let us remember that we too are called to be like Mary, a people who move ourselves from our fear and anxiety to a place of faithfulness in every moment of our lives, knowing that God goes with us even when we get it wrong that God is with us, stilling our hearts, quieting our minds, and granting us and calling us toward peace. So friends, this season, this week, this day, may you experience that overwhelming sense of God's peace as we work to move ourselves from fear and anxiety to faithfulness, following in the footsteps of Mary. Amen. Friends, we invite you to affirm our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Beloved, let us pray together. As heralds of God's good tidings, let us lift up our voices with strength this day, praying to the one who comforts, restores, and heals. Let us pray for all the leaders and people of the world. You have created one human family to live in righteousness and peace. Give us the wisdom to order our common life according to your loving purposes, that your glory may be revealed and all people shall see it together. Let us pray for your church. God, you have given us the gift of the Messiah so that your church may be steadfast and true. Give us strength to follow your son until we have come to repentance and are reconciled by his love. Let us pray for those who are sick, who suffer need, who are exiled or in danger. God, you have made us for a holy purpose, to comfort and care for each other. Give us compassion to love our neighbor and patience to care for those in need. Let us pray for your creation. Your faithfulness springs up from the ground and your goodness looks down from the sky. Rid us of the laziness and greed that diminishes life as you teach us to care for your creation together. Beloved, let us remember those who have died, ever living God. One day in your presence is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. Make us one with the saints who have found their eternal home in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we lift our hearts together in a time of silent prayer.
Beloved, we lift our voices using the words Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we continue our worship today, we know that a vital part of our worship is giving our time and talents and treasure to God in thanksgiving for all that God has done and in an effort to move ourselves from fear to faithfulness, celebrating the gifts that God has given first to us. And so, friends, we invite you to participate in our offering today. You can do that by mailing a check to the church office, or if you're watching online or would prefer to give online, by visiting our website, rockportumc.org, and clicking the Give menu item in the top right. It will take you to a secure online giving platform through Tithely, where you'll be able to participate in today's offering. Friends, we give thanks to God for all that God has done and for the gift of peace and courage that God gives to us as we seek to give our lives as Mary gave hers. We join our hearts in prayer and thanksgiving for all that God has first given to us as we listen to our offertory today. God of all righteousness, receive these gifts of gratitude, the offerings of our lives. Purify them with your refining fire so that they may serve your purposes and shine with your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Beloved, go from this worship experience today knowing that God loves you. Do not be afraid and know that God is with you, inviting you on to a new adventure. 
to give your whole life in service to the living God, to make God's love known and real and to bear it into the world as Mary once did so long ago. Friends, go from this place filled with the love of God, with the peace of Jesus Christ. Go in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, knowing that you are not alone, but a part of a community of believers called to love and serve. Amen.